This is my IKEA bookshelf in my bedroom. Over the last year, I've been creating planted tanks along the top of the shelf, but I also want to fill in the middle shelving with nano tanks. So today we're going to be making a five gallon aquascape for some unique little shrimp. Let's dive in. The light we're using today is the AQ LED Star Nano, and the filter is a budget friendly Aqua One hang on back. Links to these products will be in the description. The tank we're aquascaping today is five gallons measuring 36 by 22 by 26 centimeters. Perfect for some shrimp and nano fish. Now first we need to put in the substrate and today we're going to be using master soil. I've used it a couple times. It's really great. It doesn't release too much ammonia in the beginning and the nutrients last quite a while, about one to two years. Now next up is the hardscape. So for stones we're using Sireu stone. I really love the textures that this rock gives you and the colouring is the sort of style we want to go for. Now first we're making a base of rocks for the centerpiece wood. So it doesn't really matter how good these three stones look right now. Now in goes the centerpiece wood. So I don't know what type of wood this is. Is. I just bought it at a pet expo. I thought it looked pretty cool. I want to go really simple with the wood today So there's more room for the fish to swim around So we're just gonna use this one piece Then I got some crushed up Soraya stone and just scattered across the tank and made all these little detailings Which I think look pretty cool and add a dramatic effect to the aquascape so when we fill up the tank, the wood's going to float up, which isn't a good thing, and it's going to ruin the whole scape. So to keep the wood down, we're just going to use cyanoacrylate superglue gel, so that's just normal superglue. And it's 100% safe for aquariums and any inhabitants in your tank. So for this hardscape, I'm going to be using the liquid superglue and tissue method. This is where we scrunch up little bowls of tissue and stuff it in between contact points between the wood and the rocks, and drench the tissue in superglue. To almost instantly set the liquid superglue, we also sprinkle some baking soda on top and then drench it in water. Give it a about an hour, tap the driftwood to make sure that it's not moving too much. It looks like we're good, so let's continue on with the scape. Now next we're just going to do little detailing, so this is just like adding some more aqua soil in some areas of the tank, just so it's easy to plant in, and so we can create more of a slope, which creates more depth in the aquarium, and we're also going to add more little bits of Sereo stone to bring it all together. Alright, I'm really excited, it's time to get into the planting, and I've been storing a crap ton of Anubias and Boost for the scape, so let's get into it. Alright, so I wanted to create a bit of an island, I'll just use the Driftwood as a focal point, covered in Epiphytes, Anubias, Moss, and Boost Philandra, so we just got Anubias Nana Petite mixed with some Anubias Nana Coin. I super glued each individual Anubias to a rock, and then just placed the rocks on the Driftwood, and all the Anubias' roots will eventually cling onto the Driftwood. Then I gathered from one of my other aquascapes, some Peacock and Flame Moss mixed together, we're just going to wrap that around the two arms of the driftwood and that should grow really nicely. Now usually I don't fill up the tank this early in the planting but with the sort of plants we got today we're going to fill it up straight away. And boom, it's already starting to look really good. All right, now the first plant of choice we have is pearlweed. One of my favorite aquarium plants, we're gonna have that growing and filling up most of the background there. It just looks so great as a background stem plant and grows really well, especially since we're not injecting CO2. and grows fast, but it only requires trimming once every month or so. All right, now to create some interest, we're gonna add some red plants popping out of the side there. I think that'll look really good and for our choice of red plants we're going to be using Rotala species HRA. I've got a bunch of stems that I've trimmed from another aquarium so it's really good to have that ready supply of Rotala HRA and it should grow really nice and pink in here. And now for some more pops of red, we're going to add some AR Mini just in the front of the Anubias here. I just had this piece lying around in another aquarium, so may as well just add it to the scape. Alright, and now to create a little grassland area in this tank, to make it interesting, we're going to add a bunch of Blixit Japonica to the back here. These will all grow out to be pretty nice and tall, probably about a couple more centimeters than they are now. Give them some time and it'll grow out really densely and should look really nice. But yeah, I just had a bunch of this growing out in my Enlaguppy jungle and it's looking great in here. Now to carry on the island, we're going to add a little piece of Anubis Nana Petite further to the front and a nice Boost of Phalandra Gorilla piece that I found in another aquarium. Now I'm getting obsessed with carpets and we're going to have to have one in this aquarium, so we're going to be using more pearlweed. So it actually grows really well as a carpet as long as you keep it trimmed as often as possible. Just keep it really short and the more often you trim it, the more dense the carpet will get. And as you trim it, it'll learn to grow in and form a really dense carpet, so it should look really nice. It'll give a lush green carpet and should contrast really well. Well with all the other plants in here. Now just to add even more textures throughout the plants, we're going to be adding some Ludwigia at the back there, just a common variety that you just find labeled Ludwigia at the local fish store. And we're going to be mixing that also with some Didipleis diandra, also known as blood stargrass. It looks really nice and grows red at the tips. And then we're going to have another little carpet growing along here with some Tenelum or Dwarf Chainsaws. So that should look really nice and we'll have two different carpets. Never really done that before and now that's all the planting for this aquarium. Now we just need to give it time to grow in.
Friday and just like that it's already been a month so with that said let me go show you how the tank is looking and here's how the tank is looking all right so let me give you a close look so what we're going to do now is just I'll show you how it's looking and then we're going to fix it up and show you what I do from here. So lighting wise I've had the light on the timer and it's on about 10 hours a day and 14 hours off. And it's about 80% lighting so that's pretty good for the tank. It's not too strong at the moment and you can see the plants have grown so much. Now if you look closely though we've got lots of algae on the surface so that's really the only issue. The plants are already all adjusted to the tank and starting to grow or they already have started growing. You can see the Blixer Japonica back there is covered in hair algae and, and whatever this algae is on the tank it's not nice so I've got a solution for this what we're going to do now is we're going to trim the carpet here we're going to trim that down and some of the background plants there and then I'll show you how I'll get rid of this algae Now maintenance session is over. As you can see, we trimmed down the carpet all the way down and it's actually looking good. I have a feeling that this carpet will turn out really well. Yeah, the tank's looking pretty nice. Now the thing with the algae, I actually tried getting it off the glass. One of those algae that are really sticky and when you get it off the glass, it'll just stick to anything else. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is try and kill it off or start killing it with some liquid CO2, that's gonna help. And then what we're gonna do is, today I'm gonna order 10 algae eating shrimps. So these are like some native shrimp. So these are two different uh, native shrimps that you can find in Australia. I'm gonna add those to this aquarium. Then they're gonna hopefully eat all the dying algae and um, eat all that up in a matter of a week or so. So yeah, what I'm gonna do now is dose the tank with this and kind of spot treat along the whole tank where most of the algae is growing. I'll pick the camera up once I receive the shrimp and I'll show you what's going on then. So with that said, I'll see you in a couple days. The tank is thriving now, and so are the shrimp. Almost all the algae is gone, and this is by far the best aquascape I've done so far, or at least the most successful. The carpet is growing out well, and all the reds are popping with the AQ LED stuff. I've seen several molts from the shrimp too, which is a sign that they're happy, and there's no heater in here, so I've proven that Pinocchio and Darwin algae eating shrimp don't need heaters. I haven't fed the shrimp at all yet, I'm just gonna wait till they eat all the algae first. Now I want to stock this tank with a certain nano fish that's going to take a month or so till a supplier will be stocked with it again. It's a pretty rare fish in Australia so we'll make a whole video on that later on. Until then enjoy this video of another aquascape I made with a good mate of mine. Thanks so much for watching and have an awesome day everyone.